Nitroglycerin. I'll say that before I forget. I often, I always forget what that word is. Some words I do forget. That was a liquid explosive. And it was unstable, wasn't it? The slightest vibration or knock or tap and it would explode. It was in, often featured in um, Western movies and things like that. Um, because it was so infamous, because it was it was, it was literally developed into dynamite. It was an, an, an ex, a liquid, but it was very unstable. And I think it got worse with age. I can't remember, but um, the, 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 the found that if you mix two powders, it was done accidentally as usual, found, discovered by accident, two powders got mixed together and actually accidentally dropped into the nitroglycerin and it found it was found it stabilized it but then the only way to detonate it was um with a with a small explosive charge that was the only way they could do it but um the person who, who discovered the way to, to stabilize it with these powders wasn't there sort of going to be a court case or something um because somebody was trying to patent the idea and he or um I can't remember the exact story, but he did it. The man who owned who came up with the idea patented it, patented it or sued the the person the person who was trying to patent it in their name and won. And he was called Noble, wasn't he? That um or Nobel, the man who patented it. And with money he made from it he started the Nobel Peace Prize because it, it was pretty upset about all the people who'd been killed by nitroglycerin explosions. I think that's the full that's the true story. I saw it recently and and that's why it's called the Nobel Peace Prize but um that's what I was meaning um about um the 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 detonator in a bomb it works the same way because it's basically it's um it's isn't it it isn't dynamite I don't think in bombs with the World War Two ones it, but it was a derivative and that's why when they when they're found in riverbeds like in the Thames and that they're often unstable and need to be detonated in situ with with an explosive charge. Um, I'm not sure about that, but that, I think that's why it, well, how it's done. But yeah, the, the, the fuse in the bomb was a detonator that detonated the bomb. Where was this going? I've forgotten. Um, yeah, obviously I, I saw that on a serial that was on telly, on telly when I was young, a series of, of programmes called the Danger UXB, Unexploded Bomb. And obviously, they, 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 were, they wouldn't show the wiring colours and stuff, but there were often scenes where they were de defusing bombs, and that's how it was done. And initially, if there were German bombs in in the UK be, before the end of World War Two, they'd have to, I think they'd have to either guess which which wires to cut first, so that the the bomb was rendered safe and one wouldn't detonate. But I don't know whether they could trace the wires without. They used to usually. I don't know whether it was um, actually accurate. But they used to usually unscrew the fuse from the bomb and then cut the right wires, and it, that was it. It was done. But I don't know. There wouldn't. There wouldn't be a wiring diagram for for the World War Two bombs if the Germans had got it right. But um, possibly a few. A few. Well, they wouldn't have a radio link to to the to the rest of the team, so. They couldn't. The only way they could do it was really write it down, I suppose. But it could be just that could be destroyed in the explosion by the fire. I don't know. They'd, they'd have to get it relayed to the, to the, to the, to their, to their, to their um, comrades and people like that uh, as to which way to cut first. And I don't think there's a radio link to do that. I don't know how they did it, but um, that may not have been depicted correctly on the on the TV program. But where was that going after that? Uh, Danger UXB. Uh, danger USB. I don't know. Um, well, it was about how bombs are detonated, and and yeah, the, the story of it and that. And um, don't know. I forgot what I was thinking about. Well, I had a friend who went to Ireland because he was half Irish, and he was in a in a street in a in a city in in part of Ireland. And suddenly the police started shouting at him, get away from that car. He didn't he didn't ask why, he just got away from it. Because he, he kind of realised there was a bomb in it. And they were, they were shouting, we're going to detonate it. It's, I, don't think, I think they put a timer on the detonator. And it was about to, to be detonated in a controlled explosion. <laughs> I can't remember what I was thinking about where this was going. But um, that was it, yeah. yeah. Um, there was also another series called Wings that I used to watch as a kid about... Were life in the the Royal Flying Car in World War One, 
And um, yeah, that's that was it. Yeah, um, the 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 flight in, the instructor who, who instructed the pilots didn't just have Lord Flashart's coat, as in like in Black Blackadder, the Lord Flashart, the flying ace and everything. He didn't just have his long flight coat. Um, he, had his, he had the same attitude and. Um, I can see where they've got that character from. Actually, it was just like him. It's it's quite a good depiction, uh, but there was no Captain Dowling in that series or anything else like that. But um, yeah, was there any more of that? I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, Lord Flasher he is one of the best characters from Blackadder. It's over exaggerated, so it's exaggerated, and I sometimes think think he is mocking someone, sort of. In the process, but I don't know so much now because when you see the character in Wings, it's obvious he's, he's mocking him. And other than that, I don't know.